Hello again, uh, my name is Paul. Uh, this time I'm going to talk a little bit um, about the lies that you tell to your children. We all do it. We all do it. Where do babies come from? That's the most famous one. My mum told me that babies came from your belly button. And I knew that were wrong because your belly button is for putting salt in when you're having chips in bed. And my Uncle Harry said, if you ate worms, you went, you went daft. And I knew that were wrong and all because my mate Freddie Shaw, he was daft before he started eating worms, he was. He used to stop cars with his head, he was barmy. And when I was younger, we used to live um, in a terrace house. Typical old terrace house with a very narrow um, back alleyways between the houses. You know, it's dark on the night time. And my mother used to say, don't go down that back alleyway at night. There's a humpty back monster lives down there. A humpty back monster lives down back alley. As a way to stop me from going down. You always do exactly the opposite to what your parents tell you to do at that age anyway. So, what this night, I went down there, I went out, and I went in the back alleyway at night. And you know what? I saw the empty back monster. I did. It was lent against the fence in a gateway going boom, 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 like that. Well, my mum had told me to got four legs and two were growing out of its back. If she'd have told me the truth in the first place, it would never have happened, would it? Christmas presents and all. You start looking for Christmas presents, don't you, normally about August. And this year I'm, I'm rummaging around, you know, in my dad's wardrobe, you know. And I found what I thought were balloons in his pocket. And I said, hey, Dad, what I've, I've, I've found, Dad, I had it for Christmas, like. He says, <coughs> Uh, no son, no, no, they're, um, um, I work for Met Office like, you know, and I send weather reports off with my blow, <laughs> blow them up and send weather reports off, he went, bah me, he found me, laid them off out of our bedroom window onto the street, <laughs> they were all over the road, they were on top of cars, and there were dogs coming and we stuck on the nose, and there were kids choking on them, and if you'd have told me the truth, it wouldn't have happened in the first place, would it? That's the truth. I don't know. Memories, eh? We've all got them. I remember as a kid, I used to be in a gang. We all we had a gang we were at school. My ours were called the Green Hand Gang. The call was that because we didn't have any Yankees, like, you know. And every Saturday morning, we used to go into a butcher shop to get some, you know, bits of bacon and, and bits of meat that, that had gone green and they couldn't steam it proper again, you know. And we used to give it to ferrets, like, you know. And, he was what a brilliant fellow with this butcher. He was a typical, typical British butcher, you know, a big, tall, fat bloke with ginger hair and ginny eyes, you know, a big fat red face. And he's always laughing as he's leaning on weighing machine. Oh, pound the bacon, love, is it? <laughs> pound the chops, is it? Yeah, bang, bang, bang. So we went in one day, and we didn't realise that he'd retired, and his son had taken over, and. What a completely different bloke is somewhat. What a what a what? So tight you wouldn't believe it. He was sort of bloke that wouldn't give a door a bang, you know. If if on a crutching road one day he went home and broke his wife's leg. You know, that that sort of but no sense of humour at all either. Anyway, we didn't know. We goes into the shop and we says, uh, hey, have you got any bits of bacon you hope you don't want, mister? He went BAM! Right on my mate's snot box. Right on his snot box. He says, hang on. Nobody that's a member of Green Hand Gang round here and gets away with it. Give him sign, lads. So I went... <laughs> so we buggered off. And we worked out our revenge plan. So we waited about next Saturday morning while it was busy, you know, busy time. And we, and we comes in, like, you know. And the shop's full of these... These all the women doing the doing the Saturday shopping, you know, and they're all in a queue like this, and and and, and they're, they're being a big turban with knot up front, you know, and slippers with pom poms on, and, and they're gripping the purse like this. Try and mug in one of them, she'd break your fucking back, won't she? 
and they're all sat there like this, and, and they're, they're all mill girls in them days, and all, you know, I mean, they worked at local um, sewing factory, you know, and, and it was so noisy in there, they'd all learnt to lip read or sign language, you know, so they could communicate with each other, and they're all sat there talking like this, and it was, you know, typical. Giving it all this, you know, it's, oh, wow, Bert had a bad do last Christmas, oh, we didn't did it, oh, why did I? Aye. Mind you, uh, at number 40, she's been very poorly, hasn't she? Oh, yes, yeah, she, aye, she's been very poorly, you know. She's had it all took away, you know. She's had it all took away. Aye, bailiffs, cump wardrobes, chairs, lot, it's all gone, you know. And oh, it's f full of all these, you know, these, these women. And we comes in, Green and Gang Revenge. And we got a dead dog on a bit of old rope. And we chucked it up on counter and said, that's last one today, we'll bring some more tomorrow. <laughs> 